That was so fast. Yep. It's like the fastest it's ever been. <laughs> yeah. It's right close. in there. Uh, hey, it's January. Hi, guys. Hey, hey, it's, how, it's New Year. Although our last episode was also the New Year. It's still the New Year. It's still the New Year. It's tw- to be fair, though, 2016 sucks. Yeah. Probably like a real <laughs> yeah. bad start. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I have to watch Die Hard tonight in honor. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. David Bowie, that sucked. And yeah. But then, like, Alan Rickman this morning, I'm a huge Alan Rickman fan. That was just like, oh, that one, like, hurt. And who else was it? Uh, Celine Dion's husband died, also from cancer. Um, and the voice actor for Robin Hood from the Disney's Robin Hood also died today? Yep. I don't a know lot, either of those two people. Today. What has Celine Dion's husband done that I would know? Uh, produced Celine Dion. All of Celine Dion's music. <laughs> okay. So just Celine Dion. <laughs> I he, he's a famous record producer. I forget exactly who else he's used, done between besides Celine Dion. <laughs> yeah. Um, great. This is, this is great. Um, but yeah. Anyway, my, my uh, do you guys. So you're gonna watch Die Hard in yeah. in recognition. Are you guys, Paul. Do you have any plans? I mean, I'm going to watch Die Hard anyways, so like that, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I really didn't really need an excuse to watch Die Hard again. Yeah, but... that's kind of it. <laughs> Dave Bowie just put out a new album. I still have Friday. to listen to that. I haven't had time yeah. to yet. Apparently, people are saying that he made it as a goodbye album because there's a bunch of hints that he's going to die in it. Well, that's he knew. Hearing, which they is super saying trippy. he knew a, ha- a year and a half ago. Yeah, I don't. I don't think cancer crept up on him over the weekend. It, well, no, but it's probably totally, like that. Like he was the most terminal. Only thing to do to yeah. is make an album about how you're gonna die. Like, not tell anybody about it. Just make an album and then like put it out there and die. Like that. Like fuck you, Bowie. That's such a Bowie thing to do. Holy <laughs> how shit! How dare man. you live up to yourself? Holy shit! Like the more I think about it, it's just like you know what? I'm not even gonna let anybody know that I have cancer. I'm just going to put out an album and then die. And then it'll be, th- that's the circle. It's just like, f- it'll break everyone's hearts. <sighs> that sucked. That was a bad day. Uh, favorite Bowie song. Ooh, holy Ooh. shit. I'll start then under pressure. Under pressure is really good. I got to go with Ziggy Stardust. Okay. Uh, I'm torn between Starman and uh, the man who ruled the world. I'm also a big Space Oddity fan, which is like I, I feel like Space that's Oddity like a gimme answer. That's yeah, a gimme answer. That's why, but I just you know, Under Pressure is my favorite. So I can't remember who it was, but like when I heard the news <laughs> that Bowie died, I went on Twitter to see like what people were saying, and the first thing I saw was just like, "Can you hear me, Major Tom?" And I was just like, "Oh <laughs> no!" <laughs> I think my favorite one was a picture of Will Smith and uh, Tommy Lee Jones. And they're in their black suits, so it's you know it's shot from Men in Black, and it says, "Hey, did you hear Bowie passed away?" And the other one says, "He didn't pass away; he just went home." Oh yeah. no, <laughs> that was probably my favorite one. Yeah, that's pretty good. Um, favorite Alan Rickman movie? Die Hard. Like probably Die Hard because that's just in general one of my favorite movies. Period. I I only ever hear three movies referred to for Alan Rickman. Die Hard, the Harry Potter movies, and Galaxy Quest. Oh, dude, Galaxy Quest is boss. I've never seen it. <laughs> you have I, to I, see that movie. It's I, so I've dumb. Heard, I've heard it's really good. Everyone I know who's watched it loves it. <laughs> okay, but when just understand that when people are saying really good, they mean in a dumb way. Because oh, okay. don't go into it thinking like it's like a Star Trek or something. It's no, I, a I, dumb I know movie. it's a comedy. I know it's a comedy. Yeah, okay. I mean, Tim Allen's the main character, for fuck's sake. So. <laughs> yeah, we all know how the Wait, Santa Wait, you don't remember Claus Tim was. Allen's great career as a dramatic actor? Oh, uh, he was all about it. I yeah. love watching Tim Allen doing Shakespeare. The, Rev- the, best the Revenant times. 2 the time. featuring time. Tim oh. Allen. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just, oh, so my favorite, uh, I'm a big Snape fan, so the Harry Potter pick anyone. Uh, I thought he was so good as Snape. I loved uh, him in Dogma as well. Oh, yeah, he was in Dogma, too. He was in some wine movie I saw. I could not tell you the name of it. Some what? Some movie about making wine. Uh, not adaptation. Um, shit, I know exactly I what movie I could not tell about. you what the name of it was, though. Hmm. Came out, like, amidst the uh, the Harry Potter series. <clears throat> hmm. I know exactly what the movie is, but I can't think of the name. I'm going to look it up here. All right. Uh, while you're doing that, it's uh, it's January 14th. 
Um, it's yep. raining outside. It's El Nino down here. Ooh. Uh, I'm I'm tired of this rain. I'm over it. It's That's fair. Rain is the worst weather. I'll take it, like almost anything. I disagree. I'll take apart cloud like, and rain over anything. Apart from like an like a disaster. <laughs> Sure. Uh, like I'm, you know, tornado is much obviously tornado is way worse. <laughs> um, like see your standard run of the mill everyday weather, rain is the worst. No, that's completely wrong. Then what's the worst? You, what, snow. You, correct me. No way. Snow. Snow's you can put terrible. a jacket on. Snow. Snow can terrible. cause accidents way more often than rain does, though. I, well, but snow rain is more dangerous, hands down. Rain, you're just you're you, you get wet. You're all wet. Your pants are wet. Your shoes are definitely wet. So snow, your socks snow are wet. Can do that too. But snow it's wet. That too. It takes way longer, and you can just bundle up. You can also put on a raincoat. I could put a raincoat on, but I'm not going to put rain pants on. Or you could man the lame. fuck up and enjoy Mother Nature. No at way. Its rain, best. Rain's the worst. Rain's the worst. I'm over the rain. I'm over this rain. Is Done. What I'm trying to tell you. Rain's yeah. overrated. Yeah, I'm done. Who needs it. water to survive? Obviously not California. Seattle's a real <laughs> cool city, but I couldn't live there because of the rain. See, that's like one of the reasons why I would love to live there. Just rain all the time. Okay, That'd be it. so fucking good. I'm Sean Booker. That was Paul Fleck talking, and John I, Wheeler's here. Yo. Uh, this is the Top Down Perspective, um, where uh, we're going to transition into video game talk. <laughs> No, we're smooth not. yeah i like that one we're, not, yeah, we're, we're gonna, talk gonna keep about, talking about the weather apparently we're gonna talk well how was your guys weather i i, I was selfish how's the uh, Calgary? It, we had a schnook it's a little bit warm now it's back to being yeah cold again apparently for the next couple days it's calgary it's going back and forth right now so yeah great uh speaking of snow paul what have you been playing <laughs> you know like, I put my name here, and I was thinking real hard. I realized the only thing I've been playing right now has basically just been Binding of Isaac and, like, spurts after work. I've been sick recently, so I've been kind of just Yay, getting over sick. that. It's been, like, go to work, come home, and, like, just lay on the couch or go to bed, pretty much. So I haven't really been doing a whole lot, but I've been putting in some Binding of Isaac time. There's nothing really new going on in that, just kind of wrapping some things up. All oh, right. yeah. Tenmar is right. I've... I played Warframe. <laughs> you stopped oh, yeah, Warframe. You tweeting you about that. Why is everyone suddenly back into Warframe? I've, I've been talking to a bunch of people who were suddenly playing Warframe again. Yo, so for some reason, Total Biscuit got back into that, and then I saw <laughs> him play a little bit of it. I'm like, holy shit, they updated that game. So I went back in and like, sure as shit, man, there's so much to do in that game. There's so much more to that game than before, and it's scary. But uh, nice. that game's fine. It's free. There's a lot of time sinks. Like, you could waste a lot of time if you wanted to in that game. Or a lot of money. Up to you. There's not really a whole lot to say about it. That game is, like, almost three years old now. And it's still going. So, yeah. Wasn't that one of the first PlayStation Plus games on the PS4? Mm -hmm. It was. Yeah, I remember that. I think I think that was the case. That's cool. That's all I know about Warframe. That's fair. Uh, John? Yo. Uh, I also got sick, which was why, uh, with both of us sick, that's why we didn't have a podcast last week. Uh, I played a couple games, though. Um, still working through Pokemon Shuffle, or Pokemon Shuffle, uh, Pacross. You're probably still working through Pokemon, Pokemon Shuffle. Pokemon Pacross no. refuses to end. <laughs> yeah, because uh, there's another 300 puzzles after you're done the main 300, and they have all oh. these dumb restrictions like, uh, beat this puzzle in five minutes. You can't use any power ups and stuff like okay. that. And it's proving to be harder than I expected. So sure. I'm still working through that. I've got maybe a hundred puzzles left on that. Well, that sounds good. I guess, but I like. I don't know. I wish Pokemon Pacross had actually advertised correctly, saying like, "Yeah, there's actually like 600 plus puzzles in this game," because then okay. maybe the people wouldn't have complained about the price thing. Yeah, but Nintendo never does that. They always keep that's, something secret. That's true. Possibly the best stuff secret. Eh. <laughs> eh. I'm, I'm specifically thinking like 3D land. Okay. Oh, yeah. 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 Sure. Uh, other than that, I played through or, or didn't play through. I played a bunch of Galaxy the Dimensional. Okay. That was, one of, that was one of the games I talked about during Game of the Year that I felt like if I had played it, it probably would have cracked my top 10. Yeah. And I think I, I think I was right. 
I okay. think it would have cracked my top ten. So you're liking it? Yeah, uh, it is a top-down uh, spaceship shooter. Um, it reminds me, gameplay-wise, a lot of a game I used to play in high school called Subspace. Uh, so it's just kind of like your spaceship. Um, you get you have like thrusters, so you can go forward, but you can also like use the momentum to turn around and fire backwards while you're just floating backwards. You can do juice oh, so like avoid getting shots. Kind of, yeah, but it's also a uh, a roguelike type game, so your map is not always the same when you reload the same mission. Okay, and it's just all, like asteroids. It's also, sk- <laughs> I guess, it's also skinned to uh, look like an '80s uh, cartoon or anime, kind of like uh, Robotech. So, like right now, I'm flying around in like this freedom fighter like style character. I'm the survivor of like a of a rebellion or something like that that basically got decimated except for my ship. Most people don't uh, know. So was Asteroids, but they just didn't have the tech to make it look right, good enough. Right, they, were, right. they were trying for you the... You really wanted to be Asteroids. I'm, what I'm trying to ask is, is this better than Asteroids? Yes. Okay. It's a tall order. It's a, yeah. Well, you, yes. You, will, you may find something similar to Asteroids in this if you play it. Um, Asteroids lovers agree. Galaxy, two thumbs up. There you go. Uh, later on, I haven't gotten there yet. It works. Uh, there's two difficulties, and the way it works is either like every couple of stages is a season. So season one, I'm just getting used to the game and like figuring out how to like get our ship out of where we're stuck. Season two, I believe I get access to a mech, so that my my ship can transform and I can use like uh, sabers and stuff like that. So it just kind of gets crazier later on, just like more and more anime and insane. So I'm excited to play more of it. Isn't the pause screen like a VHS tape? Yes, if you pause the game, it, it basically turns into a VH a VCR menu. Yeah, that was cool. It's got it's got like the pause like effects and everything. It's really cool. It's very eighties, but it's really fun. I highly recommend it. A cool. uh, bit of a learning curve for the controls though, and uh, don't do what I did. Maybe play on normal. Don't play on their recommended difficulty, because the way the recommended difficulty works is you can't save your progress until you beat five missions. Hmm. And uh, I keep getting wrecked on mission three and four. So, so is, is the recommended one harder than normal? No, the rec- yeah, the recommended one is harder than normal. Okay. Normal is after every mission you get a save. Okay. So I would recommend that if you're starting out. But right. it's still really fun. If you want a challenge, definitely play it. Uh, also playing Final Fantasy IV. Cool. On what system? Yeah, which version? Decide? On PSP. Oh, man, I was nice. hoping. I was hoping for the Wonder Swan. It's in Japanese. I can't. It wouldn't work. Wonder Swan Club represent. The Wonder Swan is also, besides being in Japanese, it's also a GBA port with more bugs, from what I've been told. Yeah, but so then you're, I was then actually you're told that not guy to, I was, walking around with his Wonder Swan. I was explicitly told not to play my Wonder Swan version if I actually wanted to have fun. What if the Wonder Swan ver- version had like a bonus option where you could turn it sideways and use all the buttons? Because that's the coolest thing of the Wonder Swan. I mean, that it, I do like the shape. I don't know how well this is for uh, VOD viewers here. Here's what the Wonder Swan looks like, more or less. Let's see how well I can get this on camera. So, this is the Final Fantasy II model. But it also so has buttons two on D-pads the right side. And, yeah. and buttons over here, yeah. So, you can play it in two different orientations. Great. It's, really, it's a really cool system. It's just a shame that most of the games I have for it are RPGs that are not in English. <laughs> That's true. I mean, I just have like a puzzle game, is the only thing I can really actually play on it. I have Final Fantasy 1, 2, 4, uh, Front Mission, Guilty Gear Petite, and Judgment Silver Sword, which is a shmup. I have one Final Fantasy 1, Poyo Poyo. Nice. Nice. Uh, and some Gundam thing that I've never plugged in, but it was like... I, I'm, trying to find the t- I'm trying to find the two Klonoa games that are on the Wonder Swan. Apparently, they're both really good. Okay. Hmm. And you don't have a color, right? You got a... No, uh, that is a color. color. You that don't have a, a crystal. Crystal is the rare one. Yeah, I don't. I mean, they had one when I was there, but it was like forty bucks as opposed to fifteen, and I was like, I'm kind of getting this as like a joke. So, mm. yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm not too far into four. I uh, I don't even remember to be honest. What's the last thing I did? Conveniently, I, like I can four. just quickly turn on my I PSP. I'm a fan of. I like four a lot. Uh, I am on my way to Yang's hometown. I just got Yang with Cecil. Cecil. Yes. Yes. Ah, I like four. I heard Uh, that the sequel is terrible. I've heard after years is terrible. It's on the collection I'm playing on the PSP. Uh, The complete collection comes with four, an interlude which combines the two, and then after years. 
So there's three Final Fantasy IV games on my PSP disc. Isn't there a DS or 3DS one where they're polygonal? Yep. There's that's... a DS one where they're 3D models. That's also the one that's on Steam, if I remember correctly. And you didn't want that? I have that. And I, I asked, I literally asked on Twitter because I had five different versions of it. I'm like, which yeah. version should I play? And the consensus was PSP. Do you have any idea why? It seems like the latest would have been the best one. Uh, technically, that was the latest. The PSP one came after the DS one. But the PSP one does not have the polygonal graphics? No, the PSP one's 2D. 2D with remastered sprites. I think right. you made the right decision. Why, why do you say that? Because polygonal is terrible. <laughs> okay. I don't know. Like, I, Square does their polygonal kind of well. I hate it. I played Final I Fantasy III on the it. DS, and I liked it. Yeah, like it's yeah. the same art style as three. Although to be fair, like uh, before the press Layton games before they went polygonal look so much nicer, <laughs> I think. So there is something to be saying. It's just for some good uh, like eight bit, sixteen bit art. <clears throat> yeah, I don't know. I'm I'm enjoying it so far. It's gonna be slow going to go through that though. Last time I played it, I stopped eleven hours in, and I think so far I'm two hours in. So let's see what happens. Okay. Cool. Otherwise, that's a, it for what I'm playing. It's a bit of a lull right now as we're waiting for... A lot I don't mind. Dude, remember that package I said that I wanted, that I ordered for Game of the Year discussion? Yeah. Yes. It's still not here. Wow. Holy shit. So there's a bit of a story to this. Uh, I ordered it on Boxing Day with two-day shipping. Uh, apparently, it arrived on a Sunday on the 3rd, and I went to my... It wasn't at my P.O. box. It wasn't at my mailbox. It wasn't at my house. Um, I went to the actual mailbox and there was a set of keys there, but the keys opened up an empty case. They opened so, up a chest that led to a map. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, so there was like nothing there. I just had these keys that opened like an empty room. So I'm like, what the fuck is going on? Uh, talk to Canada Post. And I'm like, yeah, uh, looks like we delivered it to the wrong house. Oh, good. Yeah. And so I said like, all right, so what so about the keys? we gave you that, that guy's car keys instead. Hopefully good trade. <laughs> <laughs> That would actually be a good trade in that case. Uh, no, they said the keys, uh, apparently they accidentally, they had hired a bunch of new hires for Christmas and they just kept accidentally giving keys to the wrong boxes. So Great. I just got the keys for no reason. So Wait, yeah, it's, it's lost. These, I had are, the these are keys to, to oh, like a, to what? To like uh, a community box that would have, will hold parcels in it. Oh, okay, okay. I'm just like random keys. And then when you said they just keep doing this, it's like, yeah. who's this guy walking around just <laughs> handing out keys? He's like, which key are you going to get? Mm, I don't know what this is. Garage door. <laughs> but yeah, Bike I talk. Lock. I talked to Canada Post and they're like, yeah, call Amazon, tell them we screwed up and they'll send you another one. Uh, so I've got the package coming again now. It was cool. supposed to arrive today, but it's not here yet. And this, is, uh, this is Rise of the Tomb Raider and uh, Mad Max. Oh, here's the thing. I'm not getting Mad Max now for another month. Because uh, they're out of eh. stock, so the, the earliest they can send it to me is, I think they said mid February. They're out this of stock. This is ridiculous. Stock, Did you man. get any like kind of like apology credit or anything? No, they just sent it to me free of charge. Oh, okay. So you didn't have to because it, it. it's not it's not Amazon's fault. It's completely Canada Post's. Yeah, I guess. It's true. But yeah, so Rise of Tomb Raider, Battlefront. Uh, it was supposed to be Mad Max and just some other random stuff. Okay. We'll eventually show up. Right. Almost a month after I ordered it with two-day shipping. All right. Sweet. Yep. <laughs> <clears throat> That's all I played. Uh, I was playing. So, again, I was waiting for some for games to happen again. Uh, Hardware Rivals is a PlayStation Plus game on the PS4 right now. Okay. Um, it's a crappy version of Twisted Metal. So, car Sweet. combat. Yeah. Um. Definitely like, you know, Unity, cell shaded up the wazoo and everything. Um, this I, looks okay, like graphically. I mean, it's, yeah, like it is the most just like okay yeah. thing. Like there's nothing great about it. It's not bad. It's just like you got 20 minutes. Why not? Okay, <clears throat> sure. Um, the, the one thing that is annoying though is... Excel. I, I don't like having both my fingers on both of the triggers. Like, I don't want to hold R1 and R2 at the same time. I usually only have one finger up there. You know what I'm talking about? Does that make sense? Does that make sense? Oh, uh, like, why would you be holding them in the game? Well, because in this one, R2 is accelerate, and then R1 is your gun. 
So you need to use like both of your, you I see. your pointer and your middle. And I never like doing that. Yeah. I like just having one right. finger up there. I think Twisted Metal did something like that. Twisted Metal had machine gun on L1 and your special was on R1 or whatever. Or like the twos. Yeah, I'm not saying this is an issue specific to hardware. Yeah. I'm just saying just in general. And this is a game that you have to do that. It does have Accelerate also on X, which solves it. But then you realize, oh, now I can't look around with the with the right analog stick. And you need to be able to do that. So, I don't know, minor gripe. That is just such a like okay game. And it's free right now on PlayStation Plus. Cool. Um, uh, then I started playing Assassin's Creed Syndicate. I need to know about this game. Is right. it actually in, worth anything? In a nutshell, I, I starts out real cool. Like it's great. There's all these cool ideas. Yeah. And then it just turns into an Assassin's Creed game again. Oh, fuck. And you're like, you're like, oh right. <laughs> I'm kind of tired of these. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but this first like I don't know hour, I was like, this is great. Like they have skill trees now, which is cool because you can like stack up your character how you want them to be. Okay. And so you there's two protagonists, right? There's uh these. I think they're twins. The uh, I forgot their last name, but Evie and Guy. I can't remember the guy's name because I always play as Evie because she has this cane that can just fuck a dude up. <laughs> like ins- the cane also has a sword inside of it. So you're not only are you just like cracking their elbows with your cane, you're then ripping out the sword and like stabbing them with it. It's it's awesome. Anyway, so she's a total badass. But the characters they play off each other uh, really well. And uh, it's funny. That's for one thing. Like I was laughing a couple times, which I was super surprised to because the last couple times I've played an Assassin's Creed game, I couldn't tell you a single thing story wise or just narratively like one bit. Um, so I was actually paying attention, which was cool. And uh, they definitely added in some more features from, I guess, Splinter Cell. Like now you actually snap into cover and can kind of lean out to like throw knives at dudes. Huh. They also put in the thing. I I don't know which Splinter Cell it came in. I've only really played Conviction that much, but uh, the kind of last known position where there'll be like a ghost image of you. Right. That's straight up in there. Uh, so you can use that to kind of, you know, corral <laughs> dudes around and whatnot. That's cool. That's a good addition, I think. Yeah, like it works. And um, there's also like a straight up a hook shot for when you're going up a building and then you can make it like a tight rope kind of thing between buildings and then scale across. So traversing is a lot easier. Okay. Um, but you know, at the end of the day, it's, it's definitely Assassin's Creed. And once it kind of opened up and, and told me for sure it was Assassin's Creed, I got my interest kind of dropped significantly. Yeah. Um, hopefully maybe it picks up again. They're actually bringing back a, uh, modern day story to it. Like some of the characters from the first three games, like, I don't I don't know if you guys remember the first three games, but, you know, when Desmond was out of the animus, he was chatting with those those like there was a British dude and like another girl. Yeah. Like if those characters are back. okay, they're asking you to do stuff like, yeah. So there's they're trying to like actually do like an overworld story again, which they haven't done for the past few years. Um, But yeah, so I'm only about three hours into the game. Um, And I'm hoping it picks up again. Again, it starts off real great, uh, but it is Assassin's Creed. It's an Assassin's Creed game. And I think I'm just. I think I'm just tired of Assassin's Creed. Like I tried playing Unity a few months ago and was just like, whatever. I think I'm just, I need a break from Assassin's Creed for a bit or something. <clears throat> now, yeah. if only Ubisoft would do that themselves. That's true. Um, and then I just got way into Super Mario Maker. Yeah, um, I'm a bit surprised by this one. Yeah, so so you, you went out and bought it again because you had only a review copy with the review servers. Right, so... Game around game of the year time, like it was popping up all over the place. And I was just like, man, I want to play these levels. I want to like I want to get back in there. OK, yeah. so, you know, I turn on my copy, which is a review unit, um, which the problem back then was I could only upload stages onto a server and play stages from a server that people who had the review unit had. So basically there hasn't been new content, I'm assuming, in months since before it came out. And I never put up a stage because I was like, like barely anyone can even play this. So, you know, I load it up. Um, th- that server is just gone. I can't even connect that thing anymore. Right. It's just a waste of space on on my on my Wii U. So I was like, guess I'll buy it. My Wii U is still stuck in uh, Canada region. 
And if I switch it, I don't. I'm not allowed to have access to the eShop. Huh. Interesting. So it's staying in Canada. Yeah, so I had to pay weird. seventy dollars for a video game, which, which still is, works out to like fifty American, if not lower. So you're still got a deal. I guess. To be fair, though, tra transferring money in between my two accounts is the biggest hassle ever. So I rarely mm. do it. But either way, like, yeah, just seeing that seventy dollar price tag. And having to like pay it for the first time was just like, Ugh, this is gross. This sucks. Um, yeah, your guys, uh, your guys' life sucks. It's anyway, gonna get worse too. So, uh, yeah, that's the worst part. I think I just heard that it dropped under seventy cents, seventy percent mm -hmm. for the first time in like thirteen years or something like that. I think someone and it did it but, twice in the past like week or and something like that. They're estimating it's gonna drop more. That's crazy. That's so bad. <clears throat> Anyway, so yeah, so I bought a, an actual copy. Finally, uh, I took I took screenshots of my old Goomba Chase stage that I was working on and recreated it. I was really hoping maybe the the level save would move over. It doesn't. <laughs> um, so I recreated I, I, it. I'm playing your stage right now, actually. The, the Goomba Chase stage? Yeah, fuck, right. it is surprisingly, annoyingly difficult. It's I'm actually... you timed it as well as you did. It's <laughs> Okay, so here's the thing with that stage. It's not hard, it's just an... Like, it, it works off your patience a lot. You just gotta, you gotta go slow. You can't jinx everything. And the way I've been making that stage was like, I want to just see like what I can do with this. It's relatively short. You can finish it pretty quick. Um, but yeah, so I, I finished the game with the stage. Um, I also just uploaded another stage now that I'd been working on for a, a little bit and beating it was super duper annoying. Great. That's always a good sign. <laughs> yeah, um, it's definitely it's definitely harder than the Goomba one because the Goomba one I don't think it takes any like challenging platforming really like no tricks you need to do or uh, but this it, one it, I think it, it is does. just waiting as far as I can tell so far. For the most part, it's it's just waiting. Like, how, where are you? How far are you? Uh, I'm chasing the mushroom. Chasing. So okay, because in that stage you have to go down, then back up, then back down. Oh God, really? <laughs> but it's like, but they're different ways. It's not just like they—they they look different. It's different stuff. I was, I was super proud of myself for being able to make the Goombas go to the, up again. I thought that was pretty good uh, mechanic building on my part. So I'm gonna pat myself on the back. <laughs> um, I got to the bottom of your first part of the maze and then got trapped between a flamethrower and a spinning wand. Great. Now I have to do everything over again. <laughs> this is why your stage is listed as expert because no one has the patience to wait this long. You made an auto scroller without the scrolling. So it <laughs> it took me a while to upload it. I had to rework the entire second half of that stage, which was really a bummer because I uh I had it was super cool beforehand, and I had to just take stuff out mainly because of the thing um, where if you, something's off screen for too long, it like no longer exists. And so the object permanence was messing me up. So I had to kind of scrap a really cool idea I had. Anyway, I finally, finally beat it after like two hours of playing it. I sent it to my buddy, Chris. Finishes in like 10 minutes. <laughs> oh, I was so angry. Um, <laughs> he's currently playing my new stage right now. And if he finishes that tonight, I'm going to scream. Like, <laughs> this, yeah, so. <laughs> Welcome to how the Mario Maker community is. It's insane, man. Yeah. Uh, I'm just glad that some people are playing it. I tweeted it out. Um. Actually, I have a. I can put it in the chat if people are interested. Yeah, because that the, Mario that Mario Maker bookmark website finally went up. Yeah, so, yeah, it went up. It went live around New Year's or something. So yeah, you can like follow follow me. I'm gonna keep making stages. Um, I gotta play some of your stages, John. But at the moment, I have two stages, so people want to play that. Um, and yeah, uh, so I just yeah, I just got back into Mario Maker, and it's it's great for podcasts. Like it's so great for podcasts, and I got real behind during the break when I just didn't have tons of free time to listen to podcasts. So mm -hmm. I'm finally catching up with Mario Baker and I got a three day weekend coming up. So I'm, I'm going to play a lot of that too. Maybe some more Assassin's Creed. It's probably going to give Assassin's Creed another shot still. Yeah, I, I want to still get a shot and I have the time now to give it a shot. Um, although I really actually this weekend, I, now that I remember it is uh, me playing uh, Sabelle and uh, that dragon cancer probably. So it's just all about the feels this weekend. Great. Um, but with that, let's do uh, let's go on to some news. All right, you yeah. read the news while I uh, Mario make here. 
Have you made it past the first part? Have you? Uh, yeah, I just did. Start. I didn't realize the other the extra mushroom was there. The extra mushroom was there. Okay, okay. Anyway, <clears throat> um, did you get that first mushroom? Yeah. Like the one in the box. Yeah. That's funny, right? <laughs> I now try to figure out if this other one's a mushroom too or not. Oh, never mind. I'm not gonna chance it. Okay. Um, I'm gonna actually jump ahead of with our. our uh, our news to our to the like the second last one because we were talking about Assassin's Creed and how it needs to take a break. Yeah, apparently it's it, it is. Apparently there's no Assassin's Creed this year. Yeah, uh, there were some leaks um, that came out saying the next Assassin's Creed is going to be set in Egypt, and it's not until 2017. That sounds badass, actually. Egypt sounds cool. It's yeah. way different. Um, I'm I'm kind of curious what time period in Egypt. Yeah, uh, but um. Yeah, that would be that would be a lot different. Maybe you get to ride a camel. Sure, that might be a thing. Get to slide down a, a pyramid. A pyramid. Pyramid. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So, we're all, we're on the same wavelength here. I, yeah, I need. No, I, want, like, I want this. So. There's gonna be sphinxes there. Maybe you're the yep. reason it doesn't have a nose. Yeah. You see. <laughs> oh no! You think they're gonna do that? I really hope they do. Holy they shit! They should. Oh, you should like, like at the end of it. Like you're running away and you have to blow up the nose or something. Or yeah, it gets, it, gets I feel destroyed. like it's starting to turn into like Back to the Future, where they just start slightly messing with time. Just yes, for it to be recognizable. That's what they can do. That's the whole series. I guess. Why is it so hard right. to grasp for them? This is exactly what I want. <laughs> yeah. Um. So that's cool. <laughs> uh. If it does, if there is no Assassin's Creed this year, that would be a, a welcomed break. A lot of people are thinking maybe this is where Watch Dogs, t- Watch Dogs Two comes out. To fill that gap, that makes sense. Yeah, uh, sure. Anyway, but hopefully, hopefully they they change this one up a bit, so that that could be interesting. Mm-hmm. All right, back to the top. Uh, apparently, the Wolf Link amiibo that's going to be with Twilight Princess HD is going to be unlocking a extra state extra dungeon in cool. Twilight Princess HD. Okay. Um, the only reason I put this in here is that seems like the best thing an amiibo has ever done. Uh, yeah, I'd argue yes, provided it's not a shitty dungeon. Uh, I think you have to, it's, I, I, I'm assuming you have to play it as a wolf. That makes it's it something. gross, though, right? Like, that's the coolest thing an amiibo has done, but now that's gross, because they're actually putting content behind, like, these things that are hard mm. to find. I mean, I'm fine with that, because then it's just downloadable content, and you already pay for as long, You content. know what, as long as it's, it, like... It's, it's uh, physical downloadable content, that's exactly what amiibos are. Right, I mean, but if they that. if they only offer this as an amiibo and you can't like download this if you wanted to from like the eShop eventually, that's gross. I, I don't bet like you that. Be able to. I I hope you're able to. Otherwise, but at that's the same disgusting. time, I bet no one gives a shit about this dungeon. I completely agree with you because you like you. All, it, this is almost like a pr- like a pre order exclusive stage, which yeah has never <laughs> ever. <laughs> been worth talking about anything pre-order b- bonus wise so i think it's just going to be that yeah i guess we'll see we'll go- i agree see. i don't know because keep in mind like the best part of most zeldas are the dungeons so this may like people may like this even if it is basically just pre-order dlc but i mean the best part about the dungeon is getting the cool thing at the end too and i don't mm, think yeah, they could do that without they disrupting be able to the give balance you, like an like an item that changes much because they would just throw off the rest of the game a new I mean, boss would, would be cool it, though it's probably going to end up being some item that like doubles your defense or something or like, like that. your rupees or something. Yeah. Just something some, dumb. Some sort of like buff to me, a buff item only. Apparently the other uh, link world, you know, link care, Zelda character amiibos will do cool things like regenerate your health or give you more arrows. Okay, sure. So that works for, that works for me. Yeah, so, I'm okay with that. I, that's, that's so dumb. Fish guts is like the only person that's on the right page here. Will it make the spinner more relevant? Please, please, Nintendo, make a dungeon to just make another dungeon that this makes a spinner relevant. Which one's the spinner? It's that so when you get in dungeon four. It's the like the top, the top that, that you ride, ride on, on. <laughs> that you only use in one dungeon, basically. Oh, this is this is sounding a little familiar, but it's been so long since I played Twilight Princess. It's it's so dumb. You, you if it, you wait, saw do, it, you'd be does like, does it look kind of oh, like yeah. a gear? And you yeah. Like connect yeah. To yes. The wall. Okay, now I remember it. It's a yeah. gear that you surf on. That was super dumb. <laughs> and was... they put it in Hyrule Warriors, and it was actually kind of funny. Would you say 
Oh, it's in Hyrule Warriors, you say? Yeah. Oh, big surprise. Your, your favorite game. You're telling me the worst Zelda oh, item, God. possibly of all time, is I don't, in the, one of the worst mm, Zelda games. I don't, th I don't necessarily think it's the worst. It just... What's the worst? I don't even know. The, the thing that makes the spinner the worst, though, is how underutilized it is. So it's just the worst because there's not a whole lot of situations you can use it in. So if What's, they made more situations that you could use a spinner in, maybe it would be kind of cool. Maybe. Yeah. What's worse than the spinner? Hmm. I'm trying to think of what's, other... What's worse than the spinner? Yeah. What is, the, what like... is the worst Zelda item? That chunk of meat that you literally only have to skip the boss. What? Uh, what in, game in is the that original, in? in the original Zelda. There's a hunk of meat that you buy to get past like a guard. <laughs> I don't Sounds remember great. this at all. I, don't, yeah, I, don't, it, I, don't. I, I played Zelda one really recently. Trust me, it's there. Okay. I mean, I do trust you. So Somebody's saying the Dominion Rod. Which one was that? There's been a lot of rods in Zelda. Yeah, there have Is that have the one been. that makes blocks? No, that's the no. cane of Somalia. Or what the fuck like did the Dominion the Rod... The cane of Somalia. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck did the Dominion Rod do? I think that was in Twilight Princess as well, but I don't remember what the fuck Tell it me did. the two worst items in uh, Zelda history that, that... are in Twilight Princess. I mean, yeah. Yep, someone's saying it's Twilight Princess. This is great. This is making me more, less and less interested in Twilight oh, Princess. Oh, you controlled statues with it. Oh, my God. That's, yeah. that's actually that, the worst item. I actually think that's cooler than the top. I disagree. <laughs> Just because it's cooler to like ride on something than it is to just passively control something, which is why I hate video games. Okay, but can we all agree that the best item is Rock's cape? I can't Where remember which one that is. That's the it's... one that makes you jump. Jump and then you can like glide with it. You get you do a flip and then that, that, glide. Oh, yeah. Certain ones let you do that. That was like the Minish Cap and uh, Four Swords. Both are great games. That that's true. <laughs> I didn't say that. The cane of salami. Cane Sounds of delicious. Salami. We should move on. Yeah. Um, <laughs> speaking of amiibos, uh, the Shovel Knight amiibo will let you scan it inside the box. What? By design, it says too. Yeah, like you'll be. You don't have to take it out of the box to scan it. So if you're a collector, you can keep it mint. Oh, they actually. Uh, Only David, amiibo that lets you do that. David uh, D'Angelo actually made a comment on this. It's basically from feedback from fans. They said they wanted it, so they're like, okay, that's why. I just thought that's that was cool. cool. Yeah. So there's that. Um, Shovel Knight is a cool game. Yes. Uh, Psychonauts 2 got fully funded. A couple of these are from a while not, ago because we missed last not, week. Not surprised. I beat your stage, by the way, Sean. Oh, okay. Cool. Did you, did you give me a star? Yes. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, this podcast is over. <laughs> so it's this, so it's this friendship. <laughs> but now try my second stage. See, see if we can do that with, as quick. Sure. Okay, um, Oculus Rift. This is probably like the biggest news of last week. Yeah, this was big. Pricing, release date, sometime in March, $600. Yeah. Um, I don't recall us making predictions on the Oculus Rift. We totally price. did. We totally did. Do you want yes. me to look them up? Yeah, yeah it, it was Mine under... Was 200 and yours was 250 We're way. Yeah. We're both way under. Yeah. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Oh, no, wait, and... I, did, I did it on my Game of the Year one. Uh... Oh, that's in like a compl okay. I got to do that on my phone. Hang on. There's also been uh, price talk of what uh, was it? Project Morpheus, the the PlayStation one. You mean PlayStation VR? Yeah, that one also has been priced. I did not. That has that. officially been priced. Are you sure? Or just the rumors? Okay. Eight hundred. Okay, if that's true, the Vive is easily going to be over a thousand. I did not hear PlayStation. And VR. that, holy shit, that's scary. Okay. I'll double, I'll double check on the PlayStation VR thing. Yeah, I feel like I would have heard that. Okay, uh, yeah. Uh, Paul said that the Rift's going to go to retail this year for 250 I'm half uh, right. Uh, <laughs> I'm just going to put that out there. <laughs> um, uh, John said the Rift's going to go to retail for 200 Yeah, we were both way off. I didn't say anything about the Rift. No, we were both half right, John, saying John that it's like going a, out. A third right. Um, anyway, yeah, that's, that's a lot of money. That's, I don't, I'm not getting a rift 
day one that's for sure is that a lot of money though that's a lot of money i mean that's a lot of money but this is the fucking future we're talking about and people were okay spending this on fucking consoles i mean i wasn't i did not buy a playstation 3 at launch i mean yeah that's fair but like the people that mind, are bitching are is... the people that are like oh sony playstation 4 on launch like that were it's only the three and four like no, four any, was dude 400. anything over four hundred dollars for consoles fucking stupid so like this is the future we're talking about 600 bucks is like literally nothing compared to what you get and like what the other stuff is going to come out at like it's gonna it's making me sick i want a vive and it's making me sick seeing what the like lesser models are going for because i'm actually going to have to like take a mortgage out on something or like <laughs> I'm going to have to, wasn't, like, sell uh, something. Wasn't Starbreeze doing a VR headset? Mm -hmm. What happened the with Walking that? Dead. The Walking Dead. I think it's still in development. Okay. Yeah, and John Wick, right? I think so. Yeah. I haven't heard of that thing in forever. Also, Wayward's right. If you want a fair price, wait a few years. This is very much the early I adopter think, yeah, fee. Yeah, there's no way I'm buying the first gen, like, maybe second right. gen or right. something. Like, what? There's also a thing. I bet my computer can't run it. You also need three USB 3 ports and a USB 2 port. So you need at least four <laughs> free USB ports. So I did the test for, like, can your computer run Oculus? And, like, the answer is absolutely yes, but no, because I don't have ports <laughs> open for it. <laughs> it. It would use, like, I have two ports right now that I could use. Everything else has, like, important stuff. I have open stuff. ports. I just don't think they're all USB 3. I'm going to check. Oh, okay. I sold my leg for a PS3. <laughs> I cannot find this article I read that gave me the price. I read it in the past week, too. That's the weird thing. I could probably... See, the thing is, I believe... I don't know, like, what they said about the Oculus or whatever. I believe it's probably the same price, really, at 800 but they were able to subsidize it because of the Facebook buyout or merger or whatever they did. So they're able to sell it a little bit cheaper. I don't know. Either way, I want one. Like, I want a VR set of some sort. And the Oculus is looking nope. way better than the Vive if people's predictions of $1,500 is true. Okay, I found it. Okay. Me too, I found my answer. Uh, the price of the PlayStation VR uh, apparently leaked when Forbes spotted an early listing for the device on Amazon. Okay. The listing was promptly removed the day after, and Sony issued a statement. This was an error by Amazon. We haven't announced the price for PlayStation VR but the price that came up, though, was 800 And this article is from okay. the last week? This article is from January 8th. Okay. Oh, there you go. I didn't know that. <clears throat> uh, I have enough ports. I have four USB 3.0 ports plus nice. another four USB 2 ports. So Sweet. there's no way my computer could run it. <laughs> I should I should download that thing and, and find out. Um, okay, so 600 is the, <laughs> would it, I'm not buying it at $600. let us say... Y Granted, like, don't buy the first series of them. Wait for, like, second gen or something. Ignoring or at least that reviews. Aspect, like, a lot yeah, yeah. of reviews, not Ignoring just... Ignoring that point, yeah. what's the price you go you you pay? I would pay what's 500 that? to 600 on a something I know to be, okay. like, good quality. Easy. John? Uh, probably wait for it to be 400. Four is yours? I was saying three, three to 400 is probably where I would go sure. in. <laughs> um, anyway, 600 gets you uh, the headset... It gets you an Xbox One controller. And oh yeah, that's that's the other thing I forgot about. The the Oculus comes with a bunch of stuff. Well, not a bunch. It's also missing a bunch of stuff. So so like I said, it comes with the headset, the Xbox One controller, and Lucky's Tale, which is some art action RPG or something like that. And there was one other game. Can't remember, but it was more cockpetty. Anyway, it doesn't come with their. Um, like wand controllers for like the hand sensing stuff. Eve, Eve Valkyrie is the other game. Eve yeah. Valkyrie. Um, yeah. The hand the hand wands are still in development from what I heard. They're being yeah. delayed. Those got delayed to later this year. So I'm assuming those. How much was PlayStation Move? Like 80 bucks for a whole set when it came out? Or was it closer to 100? There's a camera and those. Oh, right? for the whole thing. I think it was 60 for the lollipop and 20 for the nunchuck. Yeah, so it's around then, 80. 80 plus I'm going to right say the hand controllers are close to $100 by themselves. Wouldn't that's, surprise. My, that's my guess related this year. Yeah. 
like yeah for sure yeah. i could see it also keep in mind these are american prices so your guys yeah. is, is a good 50 to 100 bucks oh yeah no the oculus rift for people that actually bought it wasn't 600 dollars. it was actually 845 what do you mean in canada people oh, that oh, have in canada yeah people oh, that, that bought that, it that ordered it oh, yeah. 845 so t 250 dollars more wow great great yeah that's awesome um people that kickstarted the thing way back when mm -hmm. for i believe it was around 275 300 dollars uh we'll get one for free yes so good for them being forward thinking sure uh but anyway, yeah, uh, mine, I'm still most interested in PlayStation VR because I know it'll run on my PlayStation 4. Sure. Um, but again, my entry point is similar to like a console price of like three to four hundred dollars. Uh, right. Yeah, I, I'm not doing six hundred. Um, and oh, right. The best news possible. Uh, 2009's Boy and His Blob remake is coming to PC and current gen consoles on January 19th. I knew you'd be excited about that. Who isn't excited about that? I kind of don't care. That game has a dedicated hug button. Yeah, it's cute. One of one of the face buttons. I love how that's just the feature you love so much about the game is the hug button. One of the those developers said what is so important that it gets its own button, its own face button, and it's you hugging the blob and making a <laughs> noise. A constipated noise? No, like a squeezing <laughs> noise. I guess that's kind of like a constipated noise. Kind of, yeah. But still, like, oh, that game is delightful. I am definitely playing that. I was just thinking the other day, like, man, I should play more mm -hmm. of that. There's no way I'm breaking out my Wii. That's for sure. Yeah. I, I got I to gotta play that. I can't wait. I know what's coming to Xbox One. I'm pretty sure it's PlayStation 4 as well. Uh, I'd assume Wii U. I didn't quite look it up, but I know for sure it's Xbox One and PC. So, yeah, I'm excited for that. That that'll be great. That that's a that's a delightful game. That's got some great like silhouette looking art levels. Yeah, that's that's a cool thing. Can I throw in a news thing quick? Yeah, because I completely forgot about this until what's like up? now. I've got one too. After Sony okay. tried to trademark Let's Play. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> This was for advertising purposes, at least. That okay. was revealed, but... That's true, but do you know why it failed? This is where it gets even weirder. It failed oh, the because there's a company in Georgia called Leds with a Z Play, and it was too similar. <laughs> wow. They copy uh, did a copyright since 2013, Leds Play. I would assume it's just too common. Like That's why you can't copyright the word blue. I mean, that too, it's really yeah. common and tons of companies have used it in marketing in the past. Yeah. I also heard it wasn't totally declined. It was just like delayed. I didn't hear that part. Uh, I was just seeing that on Reddit today. I didn't look too much into it, but I, I it was something about the thing like this could still happen, um, which would definitely be weird. Mm hmm. So, yeah, John, John, you had a story as well, or was that the same thing? Uh, no, my okay. story is uh, Splatoon's no longer getting any more free DLC. Uh, there's oh, okay. a patch coming out this month. That last pack is the last DLC period for Splatoon. They've confirmed uh, no paid DLCs in development, and neither is any more free DLC. So after that, Splatoon's done as a game is completed. Cool. I mean, hey, they supported that thing for half a year, so that, that's more than Nintendo usually does. Do you know what's coming in this update? Uh, I don't think that's been listed yet. I'm going to double-check, see if this article says mm -hmm. it. Until Splatoon comes out, right? Nice. I hope they don't do that. I really nice. hope they don't do that. I hope they. I hope they do do that. I do too. Yeah. Do you, how do you hope they spell it though? Like with T -W -O a T W O or like a two? With a two. With a two, so it'd be like S P L A two. It would be like N. It would be Splatoon, basically. <laughs> Sp oh, you wait. You want the double O there as well? Oh yeah. You so you gotta have that in there. <laughs> Yes. Uh, I think that's the worst one. Yeah. <laughs> it's so good. Um, yeah. John, how do you want them to spell the sequel? Uh, how about Splatoon 2 as yeah. in like a normal title? But like like T O O? Like, no, the, like also? Like <laughs> Splatoon as well. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. That's it. Yeah. I bet they do something lame and it's just uh, no number, just a subtitle. Yeah, I'm betting subtitle. <laughs> yeah. It's like Splatoon like drenched or something like that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Some some kind of pun. Like yeah. <clears throat> the Jap the Japanese do love their puns. Wetter stunts. 
That's what I'm hoping for is Splatoon 2. Wetter stunts? Yeah, the stunts get wetter in season two. So wet. Squid's in the house. Oh my god. This time it's personal. <laughs> <laughs> um... All right, last bit of news. Someone sent this in. I thought it was dumb, so I thought we should talk about we it. We have to. The first emotional game awards are announced. Nominees wait, revealed. Wait, 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 what? Yeah. Wait, let, me, let me read you this, this opening paragraph. The first emotional game awards will take place in Laval. Please, someone tell okay. me where Laval is. On Friday, February the 12th. So, you know, once someone wins, then you can, like, Valentine's Day, I'm going to play the most emotional game. Uh, the ceremony will... Reward the games, which bring on the most emotions in the players. Nice. The nomination, the nominee, sorry, the nominations were announced on Thursday, the 14th. That's today. That's today. Yeah, that's today. So hot off the press. Has anyone told me where Laval is? Quebec. Yeah, it's Quebec. Quebec. The, all right. Yo, we should do predictions, man. Okay. Have you, you guys haven't looked at it yet? I, I can. No. Okay, perfect. Well, okay, here we go. No, like, I have the nominees in front of me. I mean, for, like, the actual oh. awards, we should make oh, okay. the prediction. Oh, we should predict the winners, I see. Okay, that's fine. I thought you guys were going to try and guess. I'm going to put this in the chat so people can read along if they want to, and they should. Just the link? Okay. Yeah. All right. So, hey, I'll list off the, the nominees. Okay, starting off top. Best emotional game nominees. Yes. Beyond Eyes. If people don't remember that, you're the blind girl. It's on Xbox One. Everybody's Gone to the Rapture. Her story, Life is Strange, Never Alone, which I don't even remember what that game is. That's Anyone the Inuit one. Oh, man, I even played that game. <clears throat> Ori and the Blind Forest. All right. Uh, do you do want to make our prediction now for this one? Yeah, I'm writing it down on a document. <laughs> okay, cool. You keep track of this. <laughs> all right, John, what's your what's your call? You've played all of these, one of these, <laughs> for like 15 minutes. Yeah. Uh, her story. Have you played her story? No. Okay. Um, I'm going to say. I mean, okay, I'll say her story. <laughs> Yo, as somebody who played her story, there's no way it's her story. That is okay. not an emotional game. Okay. Fine. You know what? Then I'll, well, I'll keep it to games I've played, so it's fair. I'll put uh, Life is Strange. <laughs> to be fair, actually, to be fair, I have played like 15 minutes of her story. Anyway, I'll put Life is Strange. I love Life is Strange. I gotta, I gotta stick to my camp. Yeah, you know what? You're in that camp. Like, that's gonna get some TDP love there. I'm gonna go Everybody's Gone to the Rapture because I think that's what people will actually pick. Okay, okay. Uh, moving on to the second category, Best Emotional Artistic Game Achievement. Jesus Christ. What is okay, can we first off, what does that even mean? I don't know, man. Um, How is it artistically emotional, maybe? Both best emotional artistic game achievement. So achievement, we're assuming they did something like new, something grand. I artistic I want to say is like specifically relates to the art style and the emotion that you get from the art itself. Okay. So you're sure. talking which, aesthetic. Which in that case is I have a feeling I know what's gonna win that. Okay, one. well hang on, let me go through the list. Beyond Eyes, Everyone's Gone to the Rapture, Mind, Path to Thalamus Enhanced Edition. Right. Does anyone know what that Ooh. is? No, I don't actually. No. No idea. Never Alone, Ori in the Blind Forest, Sunless Sea. If we're going art style, I'm saying Ori. I guess Ori. Yeah, I mean, Ori's probably the winner there. So okay. we're all just going to go Ori? Ori, you're all in on Ori. Yeah. All right, third category. This one, mixing it up a bit. Best Emotional Game Design. Great. <laughs> what does this mean? <laughs> what is this? Um, oh, yo. The, okay. I know who's probably going to win this, but go ahead. Right. Uh, Emily is away. Her story. Life is strange. Out of sight. Does it, I don't know what that is. Anyone out of sight ever heard of that game? It nope. sounds nope. familiar, but I, I can draw in a blank. So no. Is it maybe familiar from the from the, like the uh, the quote out of sight, out of mind? Because people say yeah. that all the time. Yeah, that must that's, be it. That's you're probably right. where you're remembering it from. Popo EO, which I guess came out on Mac and Linux this year. So it counts. Cool. And Star Sky. I don't know what that is. I, I haven't heard of Star Sky. I'm going to I'm going to say it doesn't deserve to be nominated. But Popo EO, I is think my vote. I think that's what's going to win. Just for like the emotional game design, just based on like what the 
monster represents and stuff in that game and stuff. I think that's yeah, what wins. Sure, that's it's an emotional game. I don't think it's a great game, but you know, it's worth playing. I agree with you. I didn't. Enj- it's cute, but yeah. Okay, here here's an actual like different category: best emotional VR game. Yeah, I've I have I no. Of, uh, there's I've no never, way. I've never heard of any of these games. <laughs> yeah, Home is where one starts. Mind Path to Thalamus Enhanced Edition. Right. Sens. That's S E N S. Right. And the unknown photographer. I'm I'm voting uh, the unknown photographer. I am too for National Film Board of Canada. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. Yeah, I guess the National Film Board of Canada worked on that. Yep. So I have to give it to my homeboys. John, literally. Yeah, I'll, you, I'll do that. You're dev- all right. <laughs> okay. Tripling down. Tripling down. The unknown photographer. Come on. Here we go. Okay. Best emotional mobile and handheld. Cloud chasers. I don't know what that is. Yeah, I don't know. Discouraged workers. I I have no fucking idea what that is. Never heard of that either. (laughs) Angry birds in space. No. (laughs) (laughs) I was looking for that when you said it. I was like, wait a minute. (laughs) Uh, Her story. Lost in harmony. Out there. And spirits of spring. I haven't heard of any of these besides her story, so I'm voting her story. I know, and I'm going to need the same logic. So her story, oh, you're going yeah. tripling these next down. Two categories are just stupid. Triple down again. <clears throat> okay. Best emotional music. So you know the the music that had the most emotion. Everyone's gone to the rapture. Sorry, everybody's gone to the rapture. Life is strange. <laughs> Lost in harmony. Lumini, Lumini. I don't know what this is. Ori and the Blind Forest. Void and Meddler. I also don't know what that is. Yo, the music in Ori is pretty good. I'm going to go it is with good. that. I'm just a big fan of the soundtrack in Life is Strange, so I'm going to go with that. It's okay. not going to win, but I'm I'm, I'm voting on I'm that. I'm going to say Ori. <laughs> okay, and um, you know, turning things on a hail, because so far we've only been talking about AAA releases. Last category, <laughs> best emotional indie game. Oh, fuck. Here we go. So I don't want to see any of this Ori shit. All these AAAs have been clogging up the category so far. Among the Sleep. I don't know what this is. Does anyone know what this is? Yes. I've heard of it. What's Among the Sleep? It, you play as a kid basically waking up from a nightmare in the middle of is the it night. Is the, and... the one where you play as a two-year-old? Or wait, is that... There's no, two I think, I think Asleep games. Where you play as a baby. I yeah. don't think that's the one you're... I think you're thinking of a different one. I think you're thinking of... Um, I might be thinking of another one. Nightmares. No. Th- that's, no? No, fuck that game. That's not at all what I'm thinking about. <laughs> I thought that's what you're thinking of. Are you not a kid that wakes up at one point and then the game starts? Yeah, yo, this is a game. <laughs> no, yeah, um, as long as uh, it's the one where you play as a baby. Yeah, Never Ending okay. Nightmares is basically what it's like to have like some terrible mental problems <clears throat> and like seeing things. It's fucked up. You're but right. That sounds like that the best one. I saw that, but it's real TV. bad. Cool. <laughs> uh, the next game is Emily is away. Does anyone know what that is? Nope. No, I still don't know what that is. Sunless yeah. Sea. Yeah, that dragon cancer, which mm. that came out this year. How is that not on any of the other lists? Yeah, that's I, interesting. I mean, that game is about a father losing his son to cancer. <clears throat> yeah, venti mezzi. I don't know what that is. And wheels of Aurelia. I don't know what that is either. I feel like I've heard that name, though. <clears throat> um, I'll give it to that dragon cancer. I mean, I'll give it to that, too. I haven't played it, yeah. but I'm planning to play it. Yo, so. so the reason why I'm giving it to that, and this is, like, real dirty business, because I think people remembering that Bowie and all of them have died of cancer recently will keep that, like, it'll I hit mean, a little it, it bit depends harder. On who's, depends on who's voting. Like, is this You're like right, there are people vote? without souls. I was so. going to say, yeah, is a monster voting? <laughs> <laughs> all right, so we're tripling down on that dragon cancer. Is that what you want? John John didn't say. Yeah, that, that, that cool. dragon cancer. Because I know you're a big fan of uh, Emily is Away. Oh, yeah. I've, I've been talking about it nonstop. <laughs> Next, let's I, play. I play. I play it in breaks between Record Keeper rounds. That's true. <laughs> um, all right, that's a thing. If we even remember about the, uh, the, the actual... Oh, well, Paul players. did write it down. I just yeah. mean if we even remember when it happens, we'll we'll see if anyone's. Writing. I'm sure the person who wrote it in for us is going to also like inform us. Please do because this is exiting my thought capacity. I've already forgotten right. about it. Yeah, you know what I haven't <laughs> forgotten about? It's question time. Yeah. yeah. Are you sure you haven't forgot? 
I you know I have forgot where people can send questions in. Can you help me out? <laughs> oh shit! Um, you're gonna love this because oh shit! Yeah, you know what? exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, we have Twitter, uh, TDP Podcast. I did forget about Twitter. You're right. <laughs> okay, top ten perspective on Facebook. Top ten perspective at gmail.com for email. And the reason I got excited and uh, regretful at the same time, my PO box because we got a letter. Oh shit! <laughs> All right. <laughs> And it's Rise of the Tomb Raider from Amazon. Also, yo, <laughs> like, people can write into Reddit, too. I've been checking that more frequently to see if anybody talks on there. Oh, shit, I forgot we have there. a subreddit. Yeah, a subreddit. Yeah, r slash TDP. Nice and easy. Yep. <clears throat> All right, we got to do the letter first. We have like, to do the letter first. The letter get, first? Yeah, they get anything they want. I'm wondering if I should oh, put wow. John full it came screen. With, it came with a gift. Oh, it came with gifts. Oh man, oh, John. Actually do you want me to put you full here. screen so like people can see oh, you better? <laughs> this one came to us from all the way from. I can't Edmonton. remember ever being this excited before. <laughs> <laughs> you three, dear Top Down Perspective, Happy Holidays! I hope they treated you well. I've been watching for over a year now and wanted to write in my thanks for all that you do. Over this past year, I have been slowly working through the entire backlog of episodes that you have made oh, over the years. I'm so sorry. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> it has been great seeing where you guys have come from, as thanks have included a $15 Steam gift card for each of you. I hope what? you will be able to Wait. work something out for Sean. <laughs> this one's Three. for Sean. Allow me to read the numbers off. Oh, dude, you don't, you don't You don't have to read. do that. Oh, my. That's insane. Yeah. Holy smokes. Then they're actually twenty dollar gift cards. So I, unless you can set a custom amount, there's three twenty dollar gift is cards. Wait, maybe like twenty, like twenty like US. Canadian that's like fifty dollars Canadian. <laughs> it, it's from it's from uh, Edmonton, so it's gonna be Canadian. So that is like fifteen dollars. That's cool. There you go. <laughs> that's insane! Wow. Oh my gosh! Uh, thank you so much. People do not have to do that in the future. No, no. actually, please crazy, don't but... give me gifts. Like I actually feel like shit now. So wow. That, no, but yeah. hey, thank you. That's cool. It's... And fuck. I would love <laughs> if you for you to write in with some choice like quotes from the old days. I would love to hear those again because I don't listen to those, <laughs> and I bet we said some dumb stuff. So so when you're heading through there, the first steam code is. Uh... <laughs> As for a question, I wanted to ask you guys what you would change about your least favorite genre of game so that you that you would enjoy it. Thanks again, Tyler H. Uh, I'm going to see, this looks like ENAG7 in the chat or ENUG7. ENAG? Yeah. ENAG7? Oh, shit, dude. What are you doing? Don't get me stuff. <laughs> All right, I, I already got my answer. Okay, go so, ahead. So it's sports. You need to put 100-foot tall robots in it. That's what that's what hundred foot tall robot golf is. You know, I got that. That's why I'm looking forward to that game. Actually, you're right. The answer is sports games, and what you need to do is do some like cool fusion things. Like uh, that Frozen Cortex game was great. Uh, Rocket League is great. Like do some combination of things with like other games because that just make, makes them good. Yeah, for me, uh, sports genre just make it more extreme. I love kind extreme of sports games. Yeah. Yeah, like or, NBA, like NBA Jam, NFL Blitz. Sure, more arcadey then. Yeah, more arcadey. Yeah. Sorry, I wouldn't I'm even done. mind if they stopped making sports games. <laughs> That'll never happen. No, I'm just like honestly, I would not care. <laughs> Yo, I want a sports RPG. Yeah, yeah that's what like football simulator is. Their football manager. I guess, and that does really well <laughs> all the time. That's true. So. There's also there's a PS on the letter as well. Once we're done talking about this question, okay, okay. all right. Let's see yes, it. any idea if you guys will be at any local conventions this year? I would love the chance to stop by and chat with you guys this year. What's local? Uh, you guys are at plenty around that area. Yeah, like I go to Odafest because we got friends there. Um, Odafest is probably like the easiest way to like actually find you because it's not huge. Yeah, uh, Comic Expo is the next closest, but that's usually that's, pretty that, packed. That's so. huge. Edmonton also has a comic expo now, right? Have you guys thought yep. of going to that yeah, one? I have same, been to that one. Same company. Same company that does yeah. the Calgary one. Yeah. I think they were also doing a Lethbridge one, and I went to it, and it was awful. But it was also, like, the first time they've ever done it. Yeah, yeah I never go right. to the first year of a con, I've learned. Yeah. Um, I won't be in, in the area. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I yeah. used to. I used to go to all those. Okay, once again, thank you. Um, let's go to the email questions. 
Yeah. Uh, Christopher didn't send in a question. Instead, he sent in five and a half predictions because we did predictions. Oh, yeah. Um, okay. I thought some of his predictions were ridiculous, and I wanted to read them so other people could laugh at them. Okay. Oh, wow. <laughs> You're a nice person. Well, just wait till you get to some of these predictions. Okay. Um, so first off, he says, I just watched the Game of the Year podcast, and it was great. I enjoy seeing the predictions of what's to come, and uh, ended up thinking about what I think may happen for the next year for games. Here's ones I actually have a relative amount of faith in. He says, number one, Mighty Number no. 9 comes out and ends up getting so poorly received that its Metacritic score ends up being lower than Mega Man X7s, which is a 58 out of 100. That, That's reasonable. That is that reasonable, for sure. I don't think it's going to happen. It might not, think, but know. that's there's, totally there's been, reasonable. There's been so much shit with that game, I could completely see it. Especially, I mean, I guess I could, but my, I'm, if I was to vote, I'm assuming it's going to do well. Oh, yeah. It I don't, better do well, otherwise, like, Inafune will never be allowed to make a game again. I don't think it'll do well. If anything, it'll probably break even or, like, just be okay. Mm -hmm. uh, question, uh, prediction two, in contrast to the rest of you, being the three of us, uh -huh. he does, or sorry, I do think a new blank maker game will come out or get a trailer in fact i'm going to double down and say that it won't be a zelda maker but rather that intelligent systems will announce a fire emblem maker so There's rpg no that's happening so it's like an rpg maker but like for specifically RPG. for tactics games i guess i guess a tactics one would be the easiest to do yeah because it is like a grid okay <clears throat> like Christopher, I, you're wrong, but I could see how you would get to that conclusion, and I respect it. I could see yeah, there it, being it'd be a nice, fire emblem. It'd be maker. nice, but it won't happen. That's yeah. gonna be my standing on a fire emblem maker. Yeah, I I bet they do an advanced wars maker before a fire emblem. I maker. could see that for yeah. sure. Keep in mind, I mean, they have they, they already they already do that. You can make your own maps in the first advanced wars in the GBA. They, oh, there you go. Then I was gonna say, keep in mind with the fire emblem people, they're already working on what is kind of two Fire Emblem games right now, <clears throat> and they have that cross thing with the Persona team. Well, so Fates, like, Fates is already out in Japan. I know, but they're still working on localizing and, over here. It's, it's coming and, out here in like a month, isn't it? And then they have the Persona thing. Yeah, it's next month. Um, it, if anything, like, yeah, it would be Zelda or Metroid. They'll never do a Metroid maker. You don't think so? I no, don't why, think so either. Why not? They don't show that series any respect as it is. <laughs> Yeah. Hey, there's a new Metroid coming out. What are you talking about? Yo, F Zero Maker, make it happen, Nintendo. I that could would see a be... Mario Kart Maker. God, that would be they, so. They good. They already made an F Zero Maker. That was on the 64 DD. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, I'm, I'm serious. That actually does exist. Um, I disagree. I don't think they're doing any other Maker thing this year. Well, nothing. No, yeah, no trailer, I, nothing. I agree with you. They're not <laughs> yep. going to do that. Uh, number three, Kojima and Sony will announce and possibly release a teaser trailer for their first post-Konami game, only for shit to hit the fan as Konami sues them for IP infringement. This lawsuit does not necessarily have to be successful or make any amount of real sense. Uh, you know what? I don't think that yeah, I could see that happening. No, I disagree. For the very think. reason that Konami is trying to get out of this game, I don't think they would Kojima, honestly care. Mean, right? Or oh no, you're, you're no Konami. Konami doesn't. I just think that they don't care. Okay, this is where the caveat is: if they're smart, they don't care enough because like it's gonna bring up just a huge fucking problem for their brand. But they're not smart because they're Konami. So you know what? I don't really know which way to go on this anymore. I don't think. Yeah, Kojima I'm kind of makes... torn on that one. I think Kojima's new IP will be quite different from a Konami property because he's done that for so long. The only way they would sue him is if he came out with like Platinum Gear Liquid. No, it, it's going to be a Zone of the Ender style game. That's what I'm calling right now. It's going to be a Zone of the cool. Ender style game. Yeah. Um, and that's going to piss off Konami. Cool. Uh, prediction 4, Nintendo will tease Mother 3 fi finally being released stateside only for unexplained problems to occur and promptly result in them having to abandon ship. Nah, I, you, know, you wouldn't no. announce it if you if you were going to bring it out. Uh, yeah, I agree. Nintendo's not that dumb. Yeah. They like, know. They know. Any unexplained circumstances, they would have resolved before they announce it. That's Agreed. Yeah, that's not how companies work. Agreed. Nintendo would have to explode. Every employee of Nintendo would have to explode. <laughs> like uh, physically self-combust yeah right there'd be yeah. blood and guts everywhere yeah otherwise there will be people in the company who will finish their promise or whatever you know what i like maverick hunter's ex guess kojima spends billions on his next project and pisses off sony that's way more oh, yeah. likely that's way he goes more way likely. over budget and sony's like why did we buy this guy 
<laughs> well, Sony didn't buy him. Weren't they just like partnering with him? And we don't even know what yeah. the relationship actually entails. Yeah. So I bet Sony's not it's doing gonna, that much. Oh, I'm sure they're pumping money into him for like I bet, exclusive I bet they're shit. giving some money. I doubt they're doing well, it's anywhere exclusive. near what he's used it's, to. They already said it's exclusive to yeah. the PlayStation. So, of course, it's gonna, they're giving him money. Yeah. But I bet it's nowhere near Metal Gear money. Right. It can't be. I mean, not no much way. is in this world. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. Prediction five. Overall, console sales will drop 20% compared to this year, uh, though there will be one console that manages to actually increase in overall yearly sales despite this. Whether the okay. Vita counts or not is up to debate since it's almost impossible for that console to sell worse than it is right now <laughs> without, the re- without the receipt returns outnumbering the actual sales. Uh, so he, I guess he doesn't say which console will do well, but he says one of them will do better. The rest will drop. I don't think that's the case. No, it's good. Uh, I would say that all, there would be a downward turn, but uh, not nearly as much as expected. The only thing I could see going downward is like the Wii U. I, I bet the, the other ones sell I see more. Them all going downward by like maybe ten percent. I bet, but like deadly Xbox sell more. Yeah, I bet they sell more. What ones? The both the PS4 and Xbox One. I bet they sell more. No, I'm gonna say they won't, because I don't think I don't think they both got a good enough release list coming out this year. Mirror's Edge two. <laughs> yeah, but you can get the PC. That's true. Uh, and then his five point five, the number of Vitas returned to stores will outnumber the actual number of Vitas sold. Which <laughs> yeah, the, that's yeah, no. Or Vita. I turned my Vita on for the first time in months yesterday. I have my Vita right here. I can't remember the last time it was turned on. All right, who wants to take the next question? I I'll guess get it's Paul's it. Turn. Yep. James writes in, what was the weirdest thing that happened to you in a local game store? Mine was when I went to my local game store to get Jack and Daxter 2 for the, or Jack and Daxter for the PS2. I went in, got the game. The game was in the case, but not the manual. The manual that was in there was for the GameCube version of Ta- to the Staff of Dreams. That's I mean, the that's weirdest not, I mean, thing. We worked at a game store. That is not weird. No. Uh, having someone actually poop in the store. What? Yeah, that okay. Did that did not happen to me. Yeah. That did Wait. not happen to our store. That happened to a store my uh, that I used to work at. Were you there? No, I was not, thankfully. That was my day off. Oh, okay, but you were, Thank like, employed God. on the... Okay, that's yeah, crazy. Yeah, I, w- I was staff at the time. There's nothing I can say that's better than that. I was going to say one time someone came to trade in a game, and there was there was definitely remnants of weed in the case. Uh, Yeah, that, that one's happened a bunch. Yeah, that's the best I had. But yeah, I, I mean, mean, game cases are the best fucking thing to cut weed up on for your doobies. Uh, Paul, has there been anything cool when you went into a game store? No, just a or bunch of shitty that. video games. <laughs> <laughs> There's not a single good one. Here. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, John, do you want to take it? Or are you still playing my stage? Because it's I impossible can, to beat. Hang on. What's after the roller coaster ride? Is that it? Or uh, there's a little bit. You're pretty close. Have you beat okay. the roller coaster ride? Uh, I got to the close of it, and I made a wrong jump. Okay. Da, 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 da. Next one comes to us from Joey. It says, The recent stretch of new Steven Universe episodes got me thinking about some of the more amusing moments from the show's past. And one that I've been particularly enamored with is a scene from the episode Rose's Room. Yeah. In this scene, Steven is shown to be playing a really quirky-looking JRPG-styled game about golfing. Yep. I forgot about this. The concept of such a game has intrigued me since I saw that episode, and I've wondered ever since if there are any real RPGs like that. One that takes an out-of-left-field, very non-RPG subject and turns into a quirky little thing with a disproportionately grand storyline. The closest I've seen is probably the eShop title Adventure Bar Story, an RPG basically just about learning to cook and making your sister's bar more successful so it doesn't shut down, though I couldn't really get into that game since the writing was kind of boring. As well as a couple, couple where the concept is that you're an NPC or not the hero in a traditional RPG setting. I'm, I can assume that's Reketeer. <clears throat> Uh, but nothing that seems to go as far as this fictional game. Are there any that exist of which I am unaware? Additionally, if you were to design an RPG based around a decidedly non-RPG sounding subject, what would you base the concept around? I mean, there was a really good game that came out very recently around this whole idea, and that was a Stick of Truth. That is yeah. literally what he's saying. Yeah. Like, that's that, but isn't that, 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 that just an magic. RPG? That. But like yeah. it's an RP, it's a non RPG subject. Kids playing like a like whatever they do, and that story gets so fucking weird and South Parked by the end that you don't even remember where you started. Basically, Co- costume quest is another good example. Costume think, quest, costume quest is a good one. I think Dark Liger in the chat has the actual best answer. Inazuma Eleven, the soccer RPG, 
I mean, there, like, yeah, there's the a, perfect thing. that's more extreme. I was going to say like Mario Golf and Mario Tennis both got RPGs for like the handhelds. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, no, I think it is Zoom 11's more you, ridiculous. You stole mine. I was going to say Reketeer, which if people don't know, uh, you play an item shop uh, owner. So you yep. have to sell the items to RPGers, but you also have to go out in dungeons and collect stuff. But it's like on the other side, which is really cool. <clears throat> Uh, and Nyrator brings up one that I actually streamed before, Choro Q. It's uh, an RPG where you're a car and you drive around to other towns doing races so you can earn money to power up and find out, like... That's pretty good. Save yeah. a town or something like that. I forget what the plot was. That's pretty good. Cool. Dylan writes, What games would you like to see have a competitive scene that doesn't? Muscle March. <laughs> God damn it. Every That'd time, <laughs> every Wind time, Windjammers. Pong. Yeah. I want competitive Pong. How? I feel like both of those must have been done. I, but I want an actual like esports league, especially now that there's like ESPN esports or whatever the fuck that Twitter account and show is. I like when they do weird games. Like when there was Catherine one year at Evo. That was great. That was Catherine awesome. was at Evo. Yeah, they were racing because there is multiplayer in Catherine. That's interesting. Yeah, cool. Yeah, I, guess I forgot about that. Um, and I thought that was super super funny. I really um, like Tetris Battle Guide in a lot. Yep. I would be down for that too. But there's already like a lot of eSport Tetris. But it's the wrong Tetris, man. I still, <laughs> it's I still think... actually fair Tetris as composed of like Ex the ridiculous battle Tetris. Exactly. It's the wrong Tetris. <laughs> I'm just, I'm thinking it'd be funny anything with like motion controls. How often do people like, are, are there many speed runners for like Wii games? That, that are heavy motion controlled that, that aren't Mario Galaxy, you mean? Yeah. Mm. I I don't know. I haven't. I mean, I'm not very deep in the easy, the speed running community, so I, don't, I wouldn't know. But I haven't heard of any. John, can you think of anything? Any what? Any like, you know, have you heard of speed runners, but doing like Wii games uh... that, are, that are like heavy motion controls? I'm sure there are. I just don't know any off the top of my head. Yeah, I, I think either. that would be funny because most of those games aren't great. And and then it's just a bunch of people flailing around. So that or like a Kinect game. Like, where's my Kinect adventure competitive scene? I'm going to. That's my answer. Fruit Ninja for the Kinect. OK. Competitive. Scene. Yeah. There we go. All right. Uh, Paul, you got this next one. Thomas writes in, imagine you guys are employees at Sony and you're informed that you guys are in charge of the tester reboot. Yes. I'm so of stoked course. for where this is going. Holy shit. Uh, They've I'm, I'm as excited as when John got that letter. Oh my God. <laughs> That's pretty excited. <laughs> they, so they secured most of the funding, but they want you guys to do a Kickstarter. Oh God, it gets better. Oh boy, in order to go. gauge audience interest. <laughs> How do you go about day the, one? Day one, baby. How do you go about the Kickstarter? Uh, uh, like, how do you go about the Kickstarter rewards, stretch goals, etc., and a potentially redesign in the show itself? Personally, for the people's or for people's actual interview for a position on the show, I'd want them to do it in a cage of spiders on their head instead of just in the show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because they did that. One of the things they had to yeah. do. Yeah, they had. A, Container spiders on their head. I forget what they had to do. I think they were answering questions or something. Yeah, I think it was the an answer trivia questions yeah. about Sony games. Hey, kid, want to be a tester? Get in this cage. <laughs> like, so stupid. Uh, okay, so how do we go about this Kickstarter, you guys? All what right, are first our off, rewards? I gotta say, if we're doing a Kickstarter for a show where the point is to get a job, that seems super dumb. <laughs> <laughs> Because you'd think the company that's offering the job would pay for this in the first place. That's so good. I didn't even consider that. <laughs> no, 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 no. They're paying for the production costs of putting on the show. Like, maybe one of the reward tiers is they get to be on the show. But... The, the, you the can't Kickstarter... you can't do that, though, for because then so many people... Is I think the... <laughs> I think, well, that's why you, well, Kickstarter has limits. You can say, like, this tier is limited to, like, five people. So okay, can, so, like, the people that, like, donated over $15,000. They can be on the test of season four? As, like, a special guest judge or something. <laughs> oh, there you go. That's yeah, a good one. Okay. Special guest judge. Okay. Um, uh, but I think, for the most part, the people are putting their money in for the production costs of us putting on this amazing reality television 
products. So what's our stretch goals then? Like, uh, what can people reach? If we get, like, half a million dollars, we will make the contestants eat baby shit. Or okay, something. For, first off, oh, <laughs> like, like, are we just making this in a fear factor now, or what? Holy true, crap. Like, like, maybe one of the stretch goals is you get to come up with, a, like, an obstacle. Like a, yes, a I like this, yes. I'm, now, here's I'm writing this down. Backers, because I'm trying to think of, like, what would be similar to being a game tester. $5 rewards here, it's the first one. Yeah. You get punched in the stomach. Right. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're you're on the right track. I think that I, cause I'm I'm trying to think like what it would be. Now like, you're thinking like someone who works in Hollywood. Yeah, yeah. Or just you know someone that has to be a game tester. Um. Uh. Maybe maybe at a certain reward tier, you uh you don't get any electricity in your house for the month. What? Okay. So it's just you got to huddle up in blankets because there's no heat coming. Sure. This is for a video game tester. This is just like, yeah, if you, if you back us enough, it's like, hey, you want like a real like, uh, yeah, you know, an this is a real experience being a game tester. You can't afford heat and electricity. Heat. Yeah, just don't turn the heat on for like a month. <laughs> right. Yeah. Or there's like, OK, there's like two tables or something. You have to choose between eating for that month or being cold for that month. Oh man. <laughs> okay. The what real is this? fucking papers, please. Okay. It's real life, uh, man. It's real life. Okay. You know what? Fuck the Kickstarter stuff. He also puts in and potentially redesign of the show. How would you guys like actually redesign the show? If you were like, if they're like, Make we're going to try about games. Yeah. Like put all the contestants with like, problems that you put into a part of the game on purpose and see like how many they find or something i feel like the problem is uh the show is already like the, perfect the show the sh like, <laughs> yeah the show <laughs> should be a documentary more style i agree because it's more of like a serious job but it wouldn't be as interesting or would not get the audience that the the, the uh, producers wanted mm. and i have a feeling it was originally pitched as more of a documentary than like a reality show no, I bet it was pitched as a reality show. Like, you know, we'll have weird, weird, weird challenges. How about, how about just they bring back American gladiators? I but mean, the, I'm also whatever, down for that. I know, right? But for whatever reason, the prize on this one is you get to be a game tester. And the tennis balls say Sony on them. Because I could go for some more American gladiator. The, doesn't uh, American Ninja exist again now or something like that? American Ninja Warrior is definitely still there, but that's a different beast that is American Gladiator. I mean, no I one mean, on America, no one on American Ninja Warrior is named Nitro or <laughs> Turbo. And, You've got me there, right? And I need I need more of that. So right. Um, maybe maybe the guy who, maybe Birios comes to your house and you get to have dinner with Birios. He will make you some Birios. How about that? I don't remember this joke. Uh, there was a guy on one of the... Well, because you weren't watching it. There was a guy on the that show would be what? who, uh, for breakfast, he was he had Cheerios, and, but instead of milk, he just put beer in it, and he called them Beerios, and he was, like, the worst. He actually got asked... They were like, all the he worst. He got eliminated <laughs> because so many people said, we don't like him around, he's mean. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. Oh man, the tester. I wonder if you can still find the tester. For people who haven't seen the tester, this was how, the, yeah. how long ago? This Those was episodes like 20, are totally this was like up on YouTube. 2012, 2011, around then. Try and find those episodes or don't. No, I'm pretty you know, sure they're actually on still, YouTube. Just like don't. the full they're, episodes. got to be on YouTube at this point. I wonder what that ta that girl's doing these days. The, uh, the, the host of it. I forget what her name was. She had red hair. Anyway. <laughs> that narrows it down. Yeah. Uh, next question, I believe, is John's. Yep. Give me a sec here. Uh, <laughs> da, da, da. Just saw in my local paper that the Canadian dollar fell below 70 cents U.S. This is from Great B-Man, by this the way. This is where I heard. Yep. Fell yep. below 70 cents U.S. for the first time in 13 years, and it got me thinking about the immediate future of my hobby of playing new video games, specifically how much I'm willing to spend to purchase a brand new title. Games are already pushing it over the Great White North at nearly $80 before taxes, and if this decline continues, I may need to set aside any future hopes and dreams for purchasing new games or consoles in 2016. I guess now is a good, as good time as any to go through that Steam backlog. Yep. I was curious, how expensive would a new game need to be before you would say that's too much for a new game? 
So this, to me, this is a thing, a uh, problem, because I remember when Super Nintendo games were $120. Okay. So it's, it's this weird catch-22 of, we've had it worse in the past. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Right, but yeah. We're, I remember bit, 64 games being up there. Yeah, <laughs> but we're a bit spoiled now because we have, like, cheap Steam games and we have mobile games. So it's... Uh, for triple A titles and like console games, yeah, we're we're a bit foobard, and it's gonna eventually probably get back up to a hundred bucks. It wouldn't shock me if the dollar keeps falling as much as it is if we if they went up to a hundred bucks Ugh. again. Depending what the triple A uh, title is, a hundred bucks, I would still buy it. Like as as long as it's a good thing product. I mean, yeah, because like I was gonna say, my answer is like seventy is too much, but I just bought Super Mario Maker, but I also really wanted Super Mario Maker, so it kind of just comes down to the game. Yeah, but I think in general, like. I was, I, you know, I kind of grew up with 60, so I guess I'm just kind of ingrained 60 is the price. Gotcha. But, you know, his, if, if his hobby is playing new video games, I think his hobby should change to playing old video games, like yeah. he was mentioning backlog at time. But even then, yeah, Steam sales, just wait. You don't have to play them right away. Yeah, pick I your, agree. Pick, pick your battles. Yeah, yeah yep. I basically only pay for what you know you want to play essentially like yeah tony house pro skater came out as 80 or 75 or 80 bucks here uh i would only wait for that to drop to like 20 yeah and you know somewhat so. related just another reminder don't pre-order games yeah <laughs> yeah there's, there's that no too. good reason <laughs> it's true um all right uh bruce writes in and this is our last email question. He says, many, many years ago, I was playing Final Fantasy VIII on my PlayStation 1. As I was about to summon a Guardian Force during a battle, I accidentally pulled the controller cord with my foot, which in turn pulled the, the PS1 off its shelf and onto the floor. Luckily, the console saw little to no damage, as the shelf it was on was about an inch off the ground. Though to my surprise, the character froze in place and was unable to summon the, the GF, the Guardian Force, yeah. uh, because of it. It was then I noticed that the lid to the PS1 popped open, and that's when I put two and two together. As long as the lid stayed up, the animation for the summon wouldn't load, which meant I had unlimited time to navigate the menus, which didn't seem very practical until I remembered selfies limit break, slots. The limit break basically let you select a random spell for her to cast unless you press the do-over option, in which case it will cycle to another random spell. Of course, I take this chance to cycle the do-over option for a while that is until i finally saw it the end that's great <laughs> i had no idea what this spell was at the time as i put the lid back on selecting the option as soon as the summon animation finally played i guess spoilers for people who might be playing final Fantasy 8 um i watched the uh, heightened an anticipation as selfie performed her the end limit break the yeah. enemy gets taken to a field of flowers which instantly yeah. ends the battle it's so good <laughs> And then I used the trick to beat Omega Weapon in less than a minute. I think it's safe to say that Selfies the End is my favorite limit break ever. So anyway, what's your favorite Final Fantasy limit break? Yo, that's a good one. <laughs> so I, I remember doing something like this in 7 where um, I fought Ruby Weapon and you could pop the lid when you had like uh, regen on your characters and they would keep regening but that you wouldn't get attacked. Okay. So if you, were just, if you were just patient enough to wait, you could basically just keep free healing your party. All right. Um... But I don't know, favorite limit break? Hmm. I think most of the Final Fantasy games I've played don't have limit breaks, so I don't have one. Like, I played some of some seven, but I don't remember. Does ten have limit breaks? I don't think so, right? I don't remember. I don't believe ben? so. Yeah. Yeah, it did. It I does? Yeah, it's, it's something similar, yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. It was just basically like a powered-up attack. But yeah, I think it had, like, special attacks. I don't think that was how you could, like, yeah. overkill a character, yeah. wasn't it? No, you had to, you, you know, overkill, you had to, like, get their special weapons or something to break the 9999 thing, because, like, that's the most damage you could do, if I remember, until you got their, like, special weapon, and then you could do, like, dumb amount of damage. I can't remember. It, anyways, it doesn't matter. Uh, Limit Breaks, I think... Ooh. I like one of Clouds, and I can't remember which one it was. Is it the one where he makes like an X with his sword? It's the like, first one. It's like the only one I know. There's Cross Slash, Braver, uh, Klima Hazard, Omni Slash. Uh, 
I like how Omni Slash is portrayed in uh, Advent Children. It's like mm. baller as fuck. But his yeah, sword splits into like seven different swords. It's so fucking good. But I wish the game showed that. Anyway, um, yeah, I'm man, trying to remember know. a bunch from like six because six had like the panic moves. Mm-hmm. But I cannot remember what the hell they were. I only remember Mirage Dive, which was uh, locks. I'm gonna say whatever Sids was that sent in the uh, the airship and just blew up everything. So I just thought that was funny that he would just kind of just scorched Earth the entire place. Okay. All right, moving on. Okay, uh, I guess that does it for email. So we'll no, move on. Oh yeah, sorry. To Twitter, saying, that's everything. Oh. Winged Wolf writes in thoughts on the adventure game genre. Boy, that is really concise and to the point for a question. Uh, All right, <laughs> it exists. I like it. My game of the year was an adventure game. They're right. I'm not a huge fan of old school adventure games, but I like the new narrative structured ones. Okay, they're fine. I can do without them though. And John, I get this last one. Sure. Last one comes from Shane that says, with the Powerball craziness that just finished in the States, what are your guys' experience with gambling? <laughs> oh, shit. That's getting a little personal, don't you think, Shane? Holy like, shit. Like, not good. I I barely gambled. I've done, like, $20 on slots. Yo, you ever kickstart something? That's a gamble yeah. every time, man. I guess that's a gamble. Pretty much. So the two things I kickstarted worked pretty well. That's pretty good. I'm glad. I'm happy for you. <laughs> 100%. Obviously, Mighty Number no. 9 was not one of those things. No. I mean, I'll play it when it comes out. What about you guys? Done any kind of gambling? Yeah, I have, but not... Like casino style? Yeah, like I've been to the casino up, a few times. putting it all on black. I, okay. I, I've played a couple slot machines. That's about it. So, and like one time, someone gave me one chip to play one hand of blackjack. Did you win? No. Oh, okay. So anytime I go to a casino... Just like if I have money that I've like won from slots or something, I'll just go and like everything on black, and that's how I'll leave. Like I don't care if I lose it because has I that ever really has that it. ever worked for you? It's never fucking worked. Are you kidding okay. me? <laughs> My girlfriend's uh, company that she works for for their holiday party, I guess the casino uh, runs like you know group events where they'll like teach you how to play like a bunch of different card games and have all the gambling stuff uh different games work so for like a few hours they just had you know dinner and drinks while they learned how to do like crabs and you know whatever else which was kind of interesting for her hmm. yeah what I'm about the lotto though. in general because that's kind of how this came up you i've never bought it? a lottery ticket because okay. i that it's the sucker's game what about you guys I uh, when I was a kid, I used to get scratch cards a lot because they I were did fun too. to do. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I guess I have gotten some from like Safeway because you just get one when you like bought something. But I don't yeah. think I've ever really won anything. Yeah. W- did you guys win the Powerball? Yes, I did it. I'm a billionaire. I'm. Go, I'm gonna be. Me. I'm gonna be completely straight with you. If I had won the Powerball, I'd be living probably like where you live, Sean, and like I would have just given <laughs> both of you a million dollars because that's how fucking much money. <laughs> Is in that stupid rain. thing. <laughs> it rain. I, I was saw like a lineup of people at the t- lottery ticket place yesterday in the Safeway. I wasn't even kidding when I was telling somebody this, but like one of the things I thought like th- would just be hilarious or great is that if I had won that, I would have just like taken a screenshot of all the people that follow me on Twitter and given each of them a thousand dollars. Because like, why not? <laughs> that could help somebody in a bind. That could like help somebody yeah. get some games or something. Like, there you go. Because why not? Who fucking care? Eight hundred fifty thousand dollars gives a fuck when you have one point three billion. Eight hundred fifty million. No, he said oh, for his I'm not making everybody. Let's not get crazy here. Like I like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I like everybody listening and everything. But holy shit, you're not worth yeah, that to me. Like, buy a dinner first. Jeez. <laughs> yeah. Whew. Tough room. All right. If people want to send in questions next week, top down perspective at gmail.com at TDP podcast or. Uh, the Facebook group, uh, the subreddit, all of that stuff works. And John's P.O. Box yes. is mm-hmm. clearly a way you can send uh, letters in, which is definitely cool. Uh, what's your guys' games of the week? Galaxy. Binding of Isaac. 
Super Mario Maker. Go play my levels. Everyone go play my levels. <laughs> Woo. Just like search Goomba Chase. And it's by Sean. Yeah, it just says Sean. <laughs> Sean. Okay. Hey, did, you beat my, did you beat my stage? Uh, No, I stopped playing after a while. Okay, because it's too hard. It's just too good no, for No, it's because it's too tedious. What if I beat it? I beat it twice because there's a checkpoint. By the way, you're welcome for that checkpoint. Oh, yeah. Don't, don't, the tell, them, is, don't tell them where it is because it's a joke. The stage is even called Oh Hey, a checkpoint. So yeah. they can figure it out from there. Yeah. Um, all right. That's going to be the end of the show. We'll see you guys later. Bye. Later.